I came from, maybe it's, he used something to make his money. So, those things, the way we say them, unconsciously to us, we are separating ourselves from those categories. You know, you're not saying it. But the moment you see somebody using or you hear somebody bought a car, and when they tell you the, the figure, you're like, what a waste. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' time, it happened to you. know, when they broke the alabaster bus and they pulled the perfume, I was like, what? Even the disciples said, how are you encouraging such a waste? We could have sold this and used the, the money for the ministry. Praise the Lord. Those are some of the mentality that we've carried over time that has positioned us in a disadvantaged edge in a way that when we see things that can actually, you know, help us to liberate financially, we shrink away from it. Not because we're not working, not because we don't want to do it, but in our mind we feel like it's not the will of God for us. Praise the Lord. So, you know, we're just not going to run through those scripture to establish the fact that God is interested in the prosperity of his children. Amen. Amen. Let's go that. Can we be on our feet as we read this? So that I'm sure you're with me. Let's just read it together. Uh, the first one is Deuteronomy 28, verse 11 to 12. It said, And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body. Let's take it slowly. In the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let that be sinking into your mind. The next one. Romans 3, uh, 8, 32. He said, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things, including money? All things. Let's go to the next one. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and it added no sorrow with it. Praise the Lord. The blessings of the Lord make you rich and takes nothing away from you. It's not going to make you sorrow over the wealth he has given unto you. The next one, Psalm 145, verse 16. Thou openest thy hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing, including me. God opened his hand and satisfied my desires. The next one, 2 Corinthians 9, 9 to 11. As it is written, he had despised abroad, he had given to the poor, his righteousness remained forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed soul, and increase the fruit of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness which causes through us thanksgiving unto God. God will bless you all around and your soul will burst into praises. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now you're not coming for a praise service, but you look at all that God has done for you and without saying it, your lips rejoice in it. Praise the Lord. That's the meaning of that scripture. Philippians 4.19. Now, this is the main one. He said, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. You see, when I want to give you stuff, I give you from my riches, and that has the cap. When, you know, we have different capacity, right? That's what I'm trying to say. But God has unlimited resources. And he said, he's blessing you from that perspective. He's, he's blessing you from that perspective of having unlimited resources. So, it's you that determine the limit. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's the hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you for this morning. We exalt your name because we know you're going to give spirit to your word. We thank you. You said you sent your word and it healed their diseases. You said no jot of this word will go except it accomplish. and come back to me, except it accomplish its purpose. 
we're trusting you, Jehovah, that your word will accomplish the purpose you desire this morning Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We receive impartation from above. Amen. We ask for the spirit of liberty Amen. that there will be lifting in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for answered prayer. And we said a lot of things that are, you know, like a lot of practical stuff. And it's things that I've experienced. One of the testimonies that we we'll share first is, I think Pastor Allah said this before, when I was back in university, I think maybe my third year or fourth, I can't remember, I was sick, like, I think maybe my third year or fourth, I can't remember, I was sick, like, I haven't been that bad. So I was admitted into the hospital and with all the stuff on my hand, my friend came to visit me, you know, the noise around. After they left, I wasn't even praying, but I think in my heart I was talking to God that I was just being made one of the escorts then. So, you know, we're doing a lot of praying and stuff like that. And we, we're believing God first, you know, great hey. So, I was talking to God that, why, why am I like this? Why am I lying down almost lifeless? Like, if you've said all these things concerning, this is real. Like, if you've said all these things, because, you see, until you begin to take the word of God like that, forget about pastor, forget about what you hear from church, until you begin to personalize it, Forget about laying on of hands until you begin to take the word and look into it and, and put your name there that they're talking about me. It may not have much effect on you. So I told God, I'm like, ah, if you said you've healed me, you've done this, why am I still lying down? And sincerely, I had in my spirit, God said, even me, I'm surprised. Serious. It was that voice that energized me. Like God said, you see, what I understand from that place is, I'm surprised why you are sick. I'm surprised why you are lying down. And what that means is, okay. I got up. And I left. And that's it. And that's... When did I finish? <laughs> I think I graduated 2001. So that should be like around two ta- year 2000. Till date, I haven't been admitted. I have not been the best Christian. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? I have not prayed more than everybody. But what helped me? I got a revelation from that day. And see, even now, my wife knows. When she's sick, I quickly encourage her to take drugs. I quickly encourage her to go check up. But she knows when I'm feeling somehow, that's the last option. I'm not saying this to, like, maybe I'm a superwoman. No. I'm not, it's not a pride. You see, when you know this thing, when some people say, say, oh, for the rest of my life, I can never be poor. Someone will put, pretend to query them. But you see, if you don't know what a man knew, or what he got exposed to, you don't have the right to question him. So when I tell you I'm sick and I don't go to explain it, you don't know my story. You don't know what the encounter I've had. Praise the Lord. Now, why I said this, it is the same premise that God exchanged our poverty for, his, for riches. Praise the Lord. The same operation. The same, the same day. So, if the health aspect worked for me, at least I'm a testimony, then that means the prosperity aspect works too. Because it's the same blood. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, that's the first one. You see, the second aspect is you have to believe God that God is interested in your prosperity. It, 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 now, at this point, forget about what you've known. You know, because even me, it got to a time that, you see, I was finding it difficult. When, when I'm, I was finding it uncomfortable when I see people talking about money. Especially in church, when they're preaching about money, money, I'm like, is this all we're saved for? Is this all we come to do? Praise the Lord. But believe you me, it's, it's, you see, they said, money answered all things. Well, let's stop it there. Praise the Lord. But you know that if we're all enhanced financial-wise, we can do a lot, of, a lot for God. One of the pastors was saying, he said, everywhere you see the billboard for Coca-Cola, if you see a billboard, because that's like the most popular product, if you see a billboard of Jesus loves you beside it, it's going to go far. But that's not going to happen by speaking in tongues. Amen. Amen. That happens because of money. And I, I'll just go first so that we can cover what we, what we want to do today. 
All I'm saying is to just have us a, get a background that see God is interested. Forget about what people have said, or maybe if you have money, then you will not love God again. It's not true. See, money doesn't have a master. The paper doesn't have. We're going to get into that. It doesn't have a master. It depends on what is here before. So there are some poor people. They are still greedy, even though they don't have. Amen. And so it doesn't matter. It's not the it's not the money that really influences. The money only amplifies what's inside of you. So who you are is still who you are. And if God is going to change you, He change you wherever you are. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Okay, so today as we're looking at unlocking the doors to financial prosperity, you know, we, we, we're moving away from miracle. We're moving away from God blessing you or God talking to somebody. We're talking about perpetual opening door, you know, like always. It's not something that is going to happen. It's something that God is going to be asking you to do stuff. You're going to be the avenue through God, through which God will be performing His work. Amen. So, like I said, in Philippians 4.19, God was talking about his unlimited resources. And see, we, we need to tune our brain. We need to tune our, our, our orientation to that aspect that, see, the person you are dealing with has no limit. I have a limit. Whoever you are looking at as a man has a limit. But if your source is attached to God, there is no limit. And why am I saying this? You see, the first stage in developing or in growing financially is the mindset. You see, most of these rich guys, they have nothing different from you. Like, we have the same creation, we have the same thing. But what I've seen that is different from them is, they don't think the way we think. They, you see, they think like this, majority of the people go this way. A, a rich man, you see, but in his, in, his, in his request, he has no limit in his heart, in what he wants, in what, what he wants to do. And that's going to lead us into some of the points that I listed down. If I can, if I can uh, dwell much on that. I said, you see, you have to develop this faith. You, you, it's part of this, the, the faith of a Christian. But you have to have the faith that God has, 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 has blessed you. Let me put it that way. Because there's nothing we get, no matter who you are. There's nothing we get that we did not get by grace. It's, it's whatever you have is by God's grace. But your faith activates that grace. Praise the Lord. The grace is to everybody. The grace of God to get well, to, you know, to increase capacity has been open to everyone. But we know that it's not everybody that is rich. Why? Because it's not everybody that has believed that grace. And even to Jesus, the Bible says, because his people do not believe him, he was limited in what he has the capacity to do. So he has the capacity to heal the whole city. He has the capacity to make everybody in that city prosperous, but because the people are not respected, because the people are not trusted, because the people are not believing him, because they still felt like he's still the same boy, just like uh, our minister during the Easter program said, he's still the same boy they grew up with. He was able to do nothing for them. He was incapacitated even though he was God. Praise the Lord. So we have to open our heart and believe. See, I don't care what you are doing now. It's inconsequential. It doesn't matter. Believe in the fact that God has established you as a pillar financially. That's where it starts from. Because if you don't believe it, then it's difficult to tap into that grace, that great world. Amen. Now, you know, I'll just say there that, you see, most times, we do a lot of work. And sincerely, of course, I'm not talking down on that. It's still part of what I'm going to talk about. We need to work. But... It's not work that creates wealth. Amen. It's just one of the principles that sustain it. It's not work that creates it. And I'm just trying to say that it is the grace of God that brings about this thing. Look at Peter. Before Jesus intervened uh, in his, you know, when he was fishing, he said they've toiled all night. Amen. And after Jesus borrowed the boat and used it and said, okay, Peter, launch into the, into the deep. The Bible said their nets were breaking. Where were the fishes the first time they were toiling? It's not from the same deep. Amen. And Peter was a professional fisherman, so I know he's not going to stay at the bay. All I'm just saying with that is, it is the grace of God that draws wealth. Amen. Amen. It is the grace of God that draws this thing. And all you just need to do is to position yourself in a, in a particular place that you're going to be accessible. Praise the Lord. So, 
Okay, we move along. We say there are some keys. You know, there are some things that all these things I've said. Okay, let me say that way. All these things I've said, like God has blessed you with bread, scripture, and everything. They are spiritual, right? They are in the heavens. When you pray that God should bless you and God said he has answered your prayer, he has really, you know, like if you ask God for a million, he has given you the million if you believe by faith. Because he said, when you ask, you receive. And if we take that scripture as the face value, then that means God has answered that prayer. But you are not seeing the million you are can't see. Amen. So what we're going to be looking at are things to draw the spiritual resources into the head. They are things to bring down our money. Let me say it that way. When you pay your tithe and God said, trust me, uh, try me if I will not rebuke the devourer and open the windows of heaven to you. It is the window of heaven. You live here. Amen. So you need the money here. Praise the Lord. So we're just going to be looking at some points that will help us, you know, to translate the spiritual blessing onto our head cleaning. The first thing I talk about, I said dream. You know, dream and speak about it. Our mind has been so corrupted, quote and unquote, to the other side. You know, because like, when you somebody say, oh, that's my brother, he's a millionaire. Naturally, you reject it. You know, you, you, something just, no, you know, wait. <laughs> you, you know, we're, we're coming to that. Oh, see that brother, he's so rich, rich, where? And even though we play with it, that's the unconscious response from our heart. And that is our situation. Amen. So, and sincerely, you need to start reconditioning that because it works. So when somebody says something like that, instead of you to reject it, you claim it. They say you're a millionaire. That is how we see it. We bless God. Even though you're not seeing that money yet in your pocket. Amen. So that is where we're going to start from. So I said dream. You see, don't think because your current job is $15 per hour and that is going to stop you from imagining the fact that you will be above. You know, I was being, when I was working as a nurse, as a PSW, <laughs> I've done everything. <laughs> you, see, you see what I say there? When the ladies come and we start talking, I said, I'm buying this facility. And I'll come back, you, I will employ you, you'll be my... I've gotten so much to the point. You see, I may be playing with it, but I think it pays me to play with the positive. So, you know, I tell, sincerely, and I don't talk with it. I tell them, I will come back. I know the place. Eh? If you've driven with me a few times, I normally show people that place. It's in Georgia. I said, I'm coming back to buy this facility. I will buy it. If you are still here, I will employ you. You will be my PA. You will be my. You know, we just laugh over it and we go. Until you start bringing those things to your subconscious, it's difficult. Sincerely, so you have to deliberate. You have to be deliberate about it. Deliberately think about it. Think about it. That one day you're going to be in church and you're going to sign a check of hundred thousand and hey, drop it. Hey, that is where it starts. You, my wife said, oh, that, is too much. "That is how it starts." <laughs> Amen. See, start removing the limits from your heart. Start thinking. Be crazy in your ideas. You know, because if you don't do that way, you cannot actualize it. Amen. So, you know, dream. And apart from your dreams, say it. Speak it out. Because these words, they are life. Amen. They are life. And in no distance time, whatsoever you are joking with, it starts coming to manifestation. I've said this several months. You know, when I was having my wedding, I've said this. I was just joking. So I was telling my mom, like, oh, somebody's going to bring me a car. And you know, back then, if you're expecting a car, that means you've invited some people that have the capacity to give a car. But I didn't do anything. I was just joking with it. Do you know what? I didn't know that thing has registered into my subconscious mind. When we finished the wedding at the reception, I'm like, ah, mom, nobody brought a car. Was I really expecting a car? No. But you know, I've learned it so much to play with the positive. But you know one thing, she said something that day, I don't know, maybe that's even the seed of the war. She said, don't worry, the car will come. And I think less than two weeks, I got a car from office free. Yeah. Amen. So you know, let's start from that. I'll move on, I'll move faster. So I said, speak it. 
Then the next point is, you have to walk. You have to walk hard. Walk and walk hard. Praise the Lord. I said, don't be used to free money. Create, <laughs> create a value capacity. You see, I said something the other time that we cannot walk to create wealth. And that's the truth. Like, you know, like when you begin to think of the kind of money you want, it's not, you, cannot be, you cannot equate that to what you're making up. Like you're making $200 per hour or and as I'm saying you want to drop a check of 100000 as a gift in church. So, praise the Lord. But at the same time, you see, the way we should see work is there is a value exchange for money. And it's going to help us. It's going to help us. It's going to really help us. Because, you see, when you let them, when I was back in my former work, you know, before I moved to Canada, I think we're all, we're all familiar with the Wonder Bank stuff. So they all came. Oh, do that. I hope your money's not there. <laughs> <laughs> so the only thing, you know, it sounds too good to be true. You drop 10,000, and in two weeks, you're going to get 100,000. Because of what I've stored in my mind, or because the way I've brought, the next question is, what are you giving in exchange? What is the value here? What are you giving that is adding this multiple? Because, see, if you, if you know this thing well, it will help you not to fall a prey. I said, what are you giving? They try to do some explanation. It's not matching up. At the end of the day, they don't talk when I'm there. So they go by me, you know, some of us that didn't do it then. Up to the extent that I guarantee somebody is a, uh, somebody a loan of almost 500,000. I didn't know I was going to use it to do that. It's just a matter of time. You see, whatsoever you don't have a value or whatever money you have that you don't have a value exchange for, I can bet you it's just a matter of time. It's going. It's sure. I had a, I had a case of a lady in Hamilton that won almost $7 million. And in less than two years, it went back to the job of $15 per hour. Because there's no value. Praise the Lord. There's no value to keep that money coming. And that's why I'm talking about work here. So you know the work here is not necessarily labor. But at least have a value, have a dignity for labor. Like, have, know that what you are doing, it's just you are creating a value in exchange for what you are earning. Amen. Amen. And you know, Ephesians 4.28, quickly, sir. Ephesians 4.28. Are we there? Okay, if you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good hard work. And then give generously to others in it. So you know there are two steps there. The first one is you need to earn. You need to earn. It's irrespective of how much. It, 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 the dollar amount is not what matters. What matters is you are training yourself in the habit of exchanging value for money. Praise the Lord. I've showed up in somebody's house before to watch a toilet here in this Canada. And she looked at me, she was afraid. She's you, you, I don't care. I don't care what at that stage. But you know, you must be used to it that there's no free money anyway. You must be ready to exchange your value for money. And you know what gives us an increase is at, the, at, this, point, sorry, at this first point, you are exchanging this value to this money. By the time you get used to it, you know that you need to increase your value. That's another thing entirely. So you increase your value as time goes on, you solve problems and you get proportionate, rec, uh, proportionate payment for your value. Praise the Lord. The next point I said giving. Giving is grace. Giving enhances your capacity to, re to receive. Praise the Lord. You see, when I'm talking about giving today, I'm not talking about giving to church. It's not excluding, but you know, don't say that it's because we're saying in church so that you can bring money. No. You see, when you give, really, you're teaching your hand to receive. There is nobody that can receive beyond of what he can release. If you are not used, or if giving a thousand dollar is too big for you, you are limiting yourself. Praise the Lord. And it doesn't, it's not necessarily, I'm not saying you should give what you don't have. Praise the Lord. I'm just saying, when the principle of giving is just having the capacity to, re, to receive, capacity to receive, because you see, you, you must get to a point that you tax yourself. I, there's this testimony I was going to share. I didn't know the person was in. Was not going to be here then. 
Before I came, I didn't even know how this thing happened. You know, we've been contributing money for church for a long time. And so there was this time I had a, um, I think maybe it's even monthly or something, $50 a monthly. I know then, probably when I came, I didn't have my work permit, this, this. There was a day, a pastor called me to the office and said, you see, we understand that you have a desire to give. But he knows the situation on ground. So he said, don't give again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was that bad. <laughs> But me, you see, whoever can limit what you give has already put a cap on what you can receive. Mm. So I, I, there is a revelation behind that giving that I've really understood. And I'm like, you know what? It's a temporary phase. We give whatever we want to give because we're trusting God for what he wants to do. Amen. So it's so difficult and it's, I, I just hope we understand this. I'm not talking about giving money to church only. But you must have the capacity to release. You know, let it be part of you. You can never go low. Amen. These are things I've practiced. See, you're going to do it at times and it's going to be like, if you do this thing now, I remember there was time I was talking to my wife and we agreed to give, give a certain amount. It was with fear. Because we know if you give this money, how can you sustain it? You know, you don't want to say something that at the end of the day you back out. But I'm not going to release that money when I start experiencing the result. Amen. Or in my heart, I'd like, you know, we're doing this. Praise the Lord. So giving, it's, it's, it's grace and it's revelation. And don't, don't let anybody talk you out of what you do. But you know, like I'm saying, I pray the Spirit of God will inspire our heart ourselves. And God said, these are the little, little points that can help us. So giving is grace. Then the next point is, I, I said we need to manage our finances. You see, we talked about make uh, any money but that's just the first step in building wealth you must be able to get to a point that your money makes money for you you know compound interest coming setting for you to begin to make money for you and how this can happen depends on what you do with the money you have you must be able to manage your money well i say it again that if what you're spending is more than what you're earning <laughs> it's difficult it's just a, it's a hard truth. I know the society we have, it's so, I was in Home Depot yesterday. You have your money you want to pay, but they're telling you, no, don't pay. Let's give you credit. No, no, you know, like, so it's so easy. Free money everywhere. Like, you feel, I went to a bank one day and before talking, they approved a credit card of 10,000. So you see all these things all around. It's not bad. But the point is, Never, never spend be beyond what you earn. I don't even care how much is it. I don't care how many of you in the family. If you don't earn it, don't spend it. It's a principle. So, you know, because I have a little exposure to the debt in, in automobile. And I can tell you some people. You see, that's, that's why you see people, they are like 75. But they have to continue working. Because if, if they stop working, the life is crashing them. Because they get into so much debt that, you know, you get this, you get, just because they say sign, 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 you get this, you get this. At the end of the day, almost 95% of your income is going into bills immediately. So how, how, how will you do it that you won't, you won't, you know, you need to live for that week or for that month. So definitely you go into credit card, you know, you begin to recycle that every month in month and it's difficult and sincerely the best way to get out of it if you're in that situation is see stop one day stop it like that you're not going to die I, I i told you i got a credit card you know and when you have this credit now you tap 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 and you go <laughs> so i was in a restaurant one day and we're eating and i just looked at it that this could take you know ten thousand and you finish it and the worst part is you will not be able to account for what you do with the money. You ten dollar, twenty dollar so that day I just broke the card. <laughs> it's here. You must be radical like that to get out of it. So I broke the card because you know you pay in, something tells you the money is in the card, you go back, you spend it. You pay in, and you're gonna be you're gonna remain like that. So I broke it and like whatever is gonna happen to happen. I broke it like that. And if you make that radical decision, in no time you get out of the debt. 
Then you start, you must live below your income. See, I've said that three times. You can never grow your financial base if you continuously spend what you earn or over it. You must, we, you know, use all the power, you, whatever you want to do. That's where the secret is. If you collect 10,000, make sure you don't spend beyond eight. And when I spend, when I say spend beyond eight, it, okay, that's another thing I'm going to get into. When I say managing our, our, our finances, I'm not against you giving, and I'm not saying, sorry, helping people, I mean. But when you are planning your finances, you see, plan your savings too. Plan your savings. Because all the people that run to you to collect money, you will be so short when you're done, nobody's going to show up. So if you plan your life first and give to anybody you want to give to show up. And when you want to give, go by the scripture. You, you have to be hard with yourself first. And to me, see, that's what I do. I say no to myself. So it's easy to say no to anybody. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I deny myself some things. So even before you cry, I'm crying already. <laughs> so I don't feel bad. <laughs> Amen. We have to be this practical. And sincerely, I'm telling you the truth. This is because most of the people that get broke, most times they don't even spend the money on themselves. You know, this person come this, this person come this, this person come this. One of the pastors call it the crap mentality. Nobody is going up. So you are trying to say this one, this one is pulling your leg. You know, what they said is if you put 10 crap. Oh, what? Uh, what is crap? Uh, so, okay, I got the <laughs> so it's the same when you put 10 in a bucket that none of them is going to get out because as one is trying to get out the other one is pulling his leg to go out and so everybody is going to remain at that same level so it's not really I'm not trying to harden our heart that we shouldn't do or we shouldn't help people but I'm saying you have to plan your finances the first thing you do when you receive your money the first, you pay your tithe and you pay yourself and pay yourself is the saving. So, another thing is, because when you have 5,000, and you pay your tithe of 500, and I'm saying now that maybe you should be able to save like 1,000, and you now tell me that, ah, but brother, somebody come and say, please, can you borrow me money? Will you tell the person you don't have money? You don't have, because that money is gone. It's not in your hands. <laughs> no, seriously, you don't have that money. And you know, See, you see why we're finding the difficulties? We don't understand some things. If you don't get out, or if you don't get this thing I'm saying, it's difficult. And these are the small, small matters now. Because you I'm trusting God that you're going to get to a level that you are managing big money. So if you don't train yourself to get it now, it's difficult then. Amen. So you have an habit that every month you are setting aside 500. You don't have 500 again. It's spent. It's gone. So all you have, and you know, the way you can tell that person is because even you yourself, you know you don't have access to that money. So you're not lying. It's, it's, it's not within the spending budget for that month. Amen. Okay. The fifth point. I said, be kingdom-minded. You see, irrespective of all the logics and everything we're explaining, it's the grace of God that brings all these things. You see, God just look at you and decide to smile on you. Amen. It's, you see, when you're building wealth, you don't struggle with it. You don't labor for it. God just opened a channel for you and it flows. Praise the Lord. And what we're doing this morning is we're trusting God on how to tap into this channel. So, I'm just recognizing the fact that, see, you can't leave God out in all of this. And one of the areas to really secure the hand of God in your finances is to put him first. When I say be kingdom kingdom minded, uh, do I have any scripture? Okay, in Luke 12, 16 to 21, it talks about, we may not need to read that, it talks about the foolish man. And when you read that story carefully, God was not against him making the money. No, he has made so much money. But you see, in his, in his heart, in, where, in everything he's saying, there's no place for God there. It's just him. Okay, I've made this much, I've worked so hard, I've built a bank for myself. 
Relax. There are more than enough store for you for years ahead of you. So just eat and play. Because your future is secure. Praise the Lord. And the only reason God took him was because he did not acknowledge that God was the source of his finances. That God gave him the ability and the power to make that wealth. Praise the Lord. So one of the ways to really hold God dear into your finances is to put God first. And when I said, you know, I was so specific about this, I said, pay attention to what matters to God. Let that be your priority for making money. This is not limited, you know, it's not limited for distributing drugs. It's not limited to come, for coming to church. It's not even limited for preaching the gospel. No. But you find yourself in a strange environment and you know, let it, let it be what you carry. Care. Care for people. God doesn't care for Christians only. No. Even though he said, when you want to give, you should give to the household of God first. But care about what happened. And look at the people around the world. Look at Bill Gates. Look at well, Warren Buffett. Look at all those guys. Look at what they spend their money on. You see, they look at it and they say, oh, malaria is destroying part of the world. We want to champion a cause that will eradicate that. Are you saying God is not interested in that? So, you know, they have passion for things after the heart of God. And the same, the same thing, you should have passion for the work of God. You should have passion for what God will care about. When you see, let, let, let it be your motivation. You see, when I was, before I started working, I went to work, my first interview actually, before I moved into Canada, it was a bank interview. I think they were going to take like maybe 100 men. We got to that center. I was weak. Sincerely. Like when I saw the crowd, crowd, I pity. Even though I don't have a job there. I'm, sincerely, I'm telling you the truth. My, I, I was weeping in my heart. And people travel from far and near, you know, like me, daddy, I think, from Baoshi to Abuja. That was roughly like four hours. So everybody traveled around the country and I got there. What? It was like they came for a, a jam exam or something like that. These are graduates looking for a job. And so right there, my heart, I was like, we have to provide job for these people. <laughs> Sincerely. Seriously, that's the way I think. I'm like, this, you have to be part of the people that wants to solve the problem, even though I don't have a job at that time. So, you, you understand what I'm saying? That should be the way we're thinking. Like, put your heart in things that you go, you're going to be like a partner to God. God is going to look at you and say, you are here. Then there shouldn't be noise. Amen. You see, you, 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 three of you are supporting the ministry, then their prayer point shouldn't be for increase in, in, in money. Because you are there. When, when it's like that, you've already secured God's hand in, your, in, your, in what you're doing. And God takes care of whatever uh, you concerns you. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. The sixth point. I said, receive divine instruction and comply. Receive divine instruction and comply. Believe God. Believe his prophet. And act in obedience. Amen. Amen. You see, it is obedience to God's instruction that activates the blessing, not the instruction itself. Praise the Lord. Not the promises, sorry. You see, God has said a lot. Man, you don't even need to read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation before you get bombarded with all promises. But how many of those promises are activated in our life? Why? They are not real, they are not powerful. Or God is lying? No. Because we don't believe them. Simple. We don't believe these things. If you believe the word of God and you act on it, you're going to break the neck. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So, you know, instructions are going to be coming. You know, from that, I remember, like, even before I started my business, I was just, look, I was begging to work for people free. Literally. So, one day I was sitting with pastor and we were talking. And he said, okay, you've talked to all these guys. They what do you need to start? I said, nothing really. It just didn't start. It was like I've never heard that word before. Just like that. So if I walk away from that office that day, and I'm still praying on what to do, what will God do? Answer. 
Nothing. He has given the word already. He's waiting on you to act. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So you need to receive. So when you receive the word, you need to act. You need to act. You need to act on it. And trust God for, for the rest. Amen. You know, look at Peter. Like I've said, talked about Peter and the, and the experience uh, with the fish. But look at Saul too. When the, uh, his father sent him to go look for the house. And, you know, they've searched, searched, searched. And the, one of the, the servant told him, he said, there's a man of God in this town. They call him Sears. People go to him. And he give people instruction. And I'm saying to you, my master, if that man says we should look for the ass this way, we're going to find it. And so I'll agree with him. And they went. I'm just going to explain that. And they went. And a lot of things happened. You know, God had another plan for them while they were there. And after that, Saul was anointed. And the scripture recorded that they went, before they even get off the way, they got messages that, see, they actually looking for it, it's already waiting for you. Amen. What I'm saying, that even though that looks simple, but, see, when you receive instruction, and you believe God has spoken to you concerning whatever we're looking at, now we're looking at our finances, act. The point is, we look at what they said, and we look at ourselves, and we look at the situation on ground. But there's something we don't see. You know what that is? You don't see what God is doing on the other hand. So you should change yourself considering all the facts available to you only. You see, God said, go to that office, knock the door, drop your CV. Ha! Your excuse is you've been there three times. They've told you back. They've told you they're not looking for you know, you don't know what God has done within a day. You don't know what the arrangement God has rearranged. You know what He has made in that particular place. Praise the Lord. God is saying it into your heart that see, drop this job and start a business. In your mind, you, what are you going to eat? Sincerely, you see, that's why most of us don't do these things. See, that's just the major reason. And I remember when I was going to start my business. Pastor insisted that I do a program. After I've explained to him why I don't want to do that program, he said, eh, just do it and keep the certificate. So that in case... <laughs> Amen. But you know, I remember what I told him that day. That, you see, if you don't have an option, the one you have has to, be, has to be the one. Praise the Lord. So you know, God is saying this in your heart that do this thing. Do, you know, do this particular one. And you look at all the facts available to you why that thing will not work. You look at all the people that have started it and they have failed. You look at everything but fail to consider the aspect of God that you cannot see. That you, you want me to explain what God can do for you? Because of you. God can really... Oh, you know the height? He can kill. That's the height of it. So I'm not saying God is going to kill somebody just because he wants to bless you. But I'm saying what he has the capacity to do. So if it's just, I'm just trying to buttress the point to the point to, uh, I'm trying to explain why we should take the word serious and act. You see, jump out when you hear it. Jump and I don't even care what happens thereafter. And sincerely, even though the word call it risk taking, <clears throat> but we call it obedience to his word. And those two things, they have some similarities. If you don't do them, nothing happens. Praise the Lord. Brothers <laughs> will testify to this. I was in one, you know, one of the guys I'm dealing with now. Thank God for that. I've been trying to get into that dealership. So, you know, I go, like, a lot of, no, 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 no. You know, we don't deal with, we don't need somebody else again. We'll be dealing with this person and stuff like that. So, one day I went and I met their general manager. You know, I didn't meet them. See, that's what I'm saying. Because you've been going to one particular place and somebody is talking to you, you don't know who you're going to meet the next day. And so if you feel or you sense in your spirit that God said you should go, go. So this day I was just there and God, you know, I just sent in my place that I should go back to that dealership again. So I went there. I met a new person. I met the general manager now. And I'm, after introducing myself to him, oh, okay, I'll, I'll round up now. After introducing myself to him, he said, like I say, I'm a dealer, I'm buying a car. So he said, what do you buy? I said, I buy everything. 
He looked at me, serious? I said, yes. Okay, sit down. He brought his pen out. To cut a long story short, I signed a check of 25000 and I gave it to him. <laughs> and when I got up from that place, that's when I realized what I did. In my account, I'm, I'm, see, Brennan is here, you, you, you testify to this story. In my account, I have less than 2000 there. And I will bet, I'll tell you, no, I don't have anybody I'm thinking somewhere that will give me money. No. So, I didn't know what I was doing. Until I left the office. I'm like, you know, I, give I didn't even give a post date check. I signed the date today. When I left the day, hey, now you've created a problem. Less of it. And you know what? God provided that money that day. I, I call right next. <laughs> I'm like, where are you? I'm so so place. How much do you have in your account? <laughs> when he told me the amount that yeah, yeah. and this is like four o'clock, right? Maybe four or four thirty. He was in campus then. I said, which bank do you use? He says, so, so. I ran into the bank. I stayed in the bank. I told them they cannot close. <laughs> that somebody is coming. He came after five. Praise the Lord. You see, you don't know what God has planned on the other side. So if He's telling you to jump, you better jump. Amen. Praise the Lord. I will be stopping here. But you know, like I've said, we've shared a lot of story, we've shared a lot of scriptures. But the most important aspect of it is the impartation of the Holy Spirit. When God decided to open the door to you, even you cannot shut it. Can we be on our feet as we begin?